How you doing? How are we doing today? Chilling. No. Oh. Um, did the library ever get back to you? No, the woman I emailed told me that she sent me an automatic, like it was an automatic email saying she'll be out until the 22nd. Okay. Wait, I think so. Yeah. How about any drug or alcohol? Don't, don't do either. Uh, what's any updates for me on the job situation? Uh, nope, been looking for jobs. Uh, went to an interview. Actually, that's a lie. I, I printed out the uh, the the job searches uh, for this month. Okay, thank you. I mean, for yeah, whatever. Yeah, this week, this month. How you had that interview? How did it go? Uh, it went good. Uh, it's a promising thing, or no? Um. Uh, well, maybe. He said he's going to call me back on the 29th. Uh, there's somebody else that if he was willing to hire me, I'd have to meet. Uh, well, he does the, I think he does transportation, transportation guy. Was this the, which one was this job for? Uh, it was a, uh, it was for, uh, uh, it's in Middleton, Future, it's a furniture, foam company, uh, Future Foam. Yeah. Do you care if I keep this? No, you can go for it. Uh, Alright, anything else going on? Um, uh, no. Um, I told the, uh, per wait, the, bo the question, there's a, I'm sorry, there's a question at the bottom of that page. Uh, I've been, it's been, someone's been talking, this technology, someone's been constantly telling, talking to me about the parole. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know, it was, his name was Matt Bally Wilson. He keeps bringing up the fact that you, last time we spoke, uh, you didn't uh, uh, explain how someone gets off parole. So, uh, sure. I that too. yeah, you, uh, the last time you were like, uh, you don't have to worry about it. So I'm asking again. Yeah, so um, what was the name, Matt? Bally Wilson. Yeah. I don't know how to spell his name. I know that's his name. Um, so basically, the court orders it. Um, and so periodically, they'll do a probationary review. I can check into when your discharge date is. Um, and then basically, as long as you pay all your um, stuff, and you whatever the court ordered is, kind of what it is, um, and then we go back in front of the court, and then they dismiss you or discharge you, they're the ones that approve it. So, just here in Madison, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So, I go in the courtroom, and they approve the dismissal based on the requirements so, met, so, be, meeting all their requirements. So, how it works is you're on for a set amount of time. Right. Um, and so then, you're with me, right, or whoever the agent is, uh, until that time period okay. comes to an end. And then you go before the court and they either approve the discharge or if you didn't meet the requirements, they accept it. So it's just okay. kind of. Alright. So and there's like a, there's be a conversation, right, on mm -hmm. behalf of the, the agency and then probably my, the, the judge's behalf. And the then judge will make comments or whatever the case may be and then I would make comments. Mm -hmm. And then it's concluded one way or the other. And then the court decides. The yeah. judge decides on that. Yeah. So. And I can look at when your discharge date is. I think it's, it's like in 2025. It's three out, three years. Three years from now. Four years from now. Yeah, yeah I don't have it. I can't remember all the time I had that. Um, yeah. How we that. And then we can basically, if you want to request to the court that you get off sooner, uh, we can talk about that and put it, I can ask the court for like a probationary review hearing. Mm -hmm. And then we go, you and I both go in front of the judge and we just kind of see where things are at and the judge determines. Oh yeah? No, I didn't know anything about that, but I don't, 
I just a lot of work probably, and I'm not interested. Okay. Well, uh, just a little. Right. Uh, um. Well, I don't want to do a bunch of things and and, and fall fall through. Uh. So, a while ago, for years, I was telling you guys I, that people were walking past me and telling me to be gay, and that's still a problem. They constantly do that. Uh, I don't know. And my question is. Why did you guys tell me that it was a mental health problem or a mental, it's a mental crisis or you're having a mental crisis after I told you or told the, uh, my other pro agent that random people, strangers, are walking past me and saying, be gay or uh, you're still gay or you're a rapist or saying out loud sex offender or and, and continue to walk. Why did you guys, after I told you that this was happening to me, so, Tell me it was a mental health problem. So at your last appointment, we discussed this. Yeah, but I couldn't, uh, it didn't get on, on camera. Okay. Um, so basically, <clears throat> what I asked was, you've been displaying a pattern. This has been ongoing, right? Well, for over like three years. Mm -hmm. So so I've been reporting this to you guys for like three years, people walking past me and saying these things. Yeah, and so my concern, because like, I called, and when I, I called the public library and talked to them, uh, you had said it's not okay for you to condition children to be gay, right? Groom, I said, uh, I, I said it's not okay to groom children. I wasn't talking to the library. I wasn't talking to anybody. I was standing in line and talking to myself. Well, this, this girl I've never met before who, who was talking to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know who she is, didn't have a face, don't know who she is. Uh, was talking to me and telling me that how do you like knowing that your fam you grew up around here or you grew up as a groomed child? Uh, and I told her it's not okay to groom children to be gay, and that's wrong. All right, and then that, and the librarian, I wasn't talking to her. She stopped doing what she was doing, and then she spoke to me and said, uh, "It's not that's hate speech." And I said, "No, that's, that's not hate speech." Well, the reason we discussed the mental health and I'm the reason I'm, I knew we were concerned about it is because you just said this woman will find you, she's not a face, I don't know who she is. You know. It's like it's like imagine you pick up your phone, right? Mm -hmm. You put it to your ear. You don't know who's calling you. You've never seen them before, but you see a number, right. and you start talking to that person. But there is and, no phone. Right? right? No, no, no. The cell phone. In the past, the cell phones were really large. Right, and couldn't it was as big as your hand. Now cell phones are your size, that size right there. And I'm telling you, somebody invented a way to put a cell phone in somebody's body. Mm -hmm. And I, I am, I've told you that I don't know for like the last six months, maybe no, a I'm year. Not, I'm not saying that you're like wrong. wrong. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you that's an invention, and it's been done, and somebody did that to me. Uh, and that girl was talking to me, and you can. And they have lenses, like little eye contact lenses, where you can put on someone's eyeball and flash an image. It's a contact lens. You put it on their eyeball, you flash an image, and you can see that. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, somebody invented a way to do better. And they invented a way to put those things inside someone's body. And that's what I told you. And, 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 and telling somebody about technology has never been a mental health problem. So I'm not tying those together. Um, like, I know that. For you, it's very real, and I know you experience these things. I believe you, I really do. Um, but I think, too, that like you should, not should, but I think it would be good to kind of explore some of those things with some doctors. I did. I, you guys said that like two years ago, like a year after I was telling you this, yeah. and I did. I went to the hospital and I asked them to, for like a made an appointment, Went to the hospital, asked them to look with a like a, the, eye, the ear thing mm -hmm. in my ear, to see if they saw any pieces of technology. Uh, they told me no. They said we don't see any pieces of technology. But it wouldn't be what it wouldn't be purposeful if somebody wanted to hide this technology in somebody's body to be able to, for it to be visibly seen by anybody. You know, it's probably hit well somewhere small enough, invisible to like the, the regular instruments doctors use. Uh, or not invisible, it's there, it's just not looking in the right place. Well, this, this, uh, this, and it's reasonable. Or this computer chip or whatever that is there, um, it's, it's, there's things about that to bother me, right? 
like it's absolutely like hearing the things. And well, it's the like negativity. constantly somebody's talking to you, constantly. And so, and that's kind of why I bring up like to kind of see if there's more that you can do with the whole thing. I just can't. I need anything. a lawyer, uh, maybe a can soft, uh, a, a, a a what do you who who deals with technology? Someone who handles technology, and a lawyer and a federal aid, like a, a cop, a good cop. And, and I'm just going to be honest with you, the reason I bring up mm -hmm. mental health aspect of it yeah. um, is that the, the things that you are describing to me, yeah. and I know you, you believe that it is a Or a cell phone. Or I, a cell phone. I, or, or it's like someone honest. built a cell phone, figured out how to put it in somebody's yeah. body, and they did it. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I'm, that's where you lose me a lot of time, Dre. Right? It's not hard to believe. It's, it's, it's possible. It's not impossible. No, and, no, I'm and I'm not a doctor. Yeah. I'm not a diagnosis. I don't know. Yeah. But some of the things you have described to me yeah. are in line with some forms of like uh, hearing voices. Which Technology. It, you can call it hearing voices. You can cover that up. But the truth is, it's technology can do that. Your phone, if you didn't know a phone was hidden under your couch and you heard somebody talking, a voice through your couch, right. and would, right, if you didn't know phones existed, right, and the phone was there, would you call yourself crazy? Um, Probably not. No. Because you know you heard the voice. Right. And the technology, is, wherever it is, is hidden from you, but you can still hear the voice and you know it's somebody talking to you. Right. And that's what I'm dealing with. So the technology is there, and the disguise or the excuse that people are taught or told to, to defend this, anyone saying uh, themselves, when anyone says that it's technology, is to call it a mental health problem. Are you okay if, like, are you okay with, are you okay with having a mental health problem? No, I'm not okay with that. I, I know it's not. I know the difference between making, I've never had this problem before. I've never. It's like someone flipped, turned on the power and on, or turned your phone on for the first time. Yeah. So, and that's that's what I'm talking about. So, three you're, years ago, right? what'd you say? You're in football, right? No, not really. No, didn't you play at UW? No, I didn't. No, no, I never played football at UW. Okay. Did you ever play football? Uh, in, in high school, for like only on special teams, uh, they kick off. Never got a chance to play because it wasn't strong, wasn't big enough. Uh, uh, so, um, and that was only my senior year, so, uh, <laughs> so I never played football, don't have CTE, don't have any mental health problems, um, never had an issue with, uh, hearing anything. So it's like I said, someone flipped the switch and started talking to me and trying to convince me to have sex with men is in, for the last three years. Right. And that's where I'm trying to, yeah. There's also a pattern too of like there's this continuous you know story here. Yeah. And with multiple different people, right? Multiple different areas. Yeah, it's like everywhere you go. Yeah, multiple people everywhere. If you happen to go down the street, you're gonna meet somebody who's gay, yeah. right? Are you saying him? Yeah. Well, you saying him? Okay. You see Jack and Wendy. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me grab. My person, I'll come get you, okay? Yeah. Okay, So like I was telling, so while, I, while they were just two talking, uh, I was, uh, these two people were talking to me in my ear, and I was going to, uh, as soon as that dude walked out, I was, and that dude walked out, the, uh, they were telling me they're not going it's, uh, it's obvious, that, it's obvious that they're playing manipulative game now, that two people, those, the parole agent's not going to believe you, but, um, like I was saying, uh, to the, my parole agent, it's, uh, it's more likely than not that the technology exists and I, I'm telling on somebody. 
and it's more likely than not uh, I'm not mentally incapable of uh, knowing the difference between a cell phone and a uh, a person and every single time I've reported this to my parole agent they've told me I had a mental health problem and sent me to see somebody who deals with uh, uh, mental health problems uh, and walking down the street and talk and going somewhere that a someone who is gay is what possibly somebody who is gay will be there and the person telling you if, when they see you if they know who you are uh, that uh, walking past you and telling you to be gay that's not a mental health problem and I'm trying to catch him I want him to I need to let him talk and finish and uh, let him say that that means you're having a mental health problem Oh, just uh, I guess I guess at the end at the end of the day, I just the only feasible thing I can prove or reasonable thing I can ask again is that you explain finally why that why telling you or any parole agent that if I walk down the street and someone who is gay sees me and and tells me walks past me quietly normally quietly and says uh, be gay like in a normal quiet voice. And continues to walk. Why did you? Why did you? Why did you guys say that that's a mental health problem? So, what we're we're not saying that an isolated incident. Oh yeah, I'm not here. Like anything is a mental health problem. So I can't diagnose that. But with that, you've shown a pattern with multiple different people, and it's the same story. And I just wonder if you can see. Even if, if it is technology, or if there's a specialty doctor that you can see to kind of go into right. detail on like what that could right. be, or what if it is, right. it's, it is. Yeah. I mean, we just want you to because it's obviously bothering you. No, it's it's it's, it's uh, that's weird, man. That's it's normal. I think the normal thing to say would be like, dude, there's that you can't. Do, there's nothing anybody can do about that. That is a problem with uh. That is harassment. That is that is a community harassment, and that's possible. It, and I'm not saying harassment isn't possible, right? But when I walk down the streets of Madison, yeah, people don't. I don't hear that. No, and I didn't either for years, right? For like 21 years, I never had a problem walking down the street talking to anybody. For in prison, didn't have a problem walking down the street talking to anybody, or walking in prison talking to anybody. They didn't do that to me in prison. Uh, so. From that time until now, I never had this problem. So I know the difference, right? And I walk down the street and people don't say anything to me. And then there are people who walk past me and say, be gay and continue to walk. Right. And that's what I'm telling you. Right. It's not a pattern. It's like a behavior of a group of people that I keep reporting to you. Right. And like you do, you do report it and you do, like, I'm not a police officer, so I can't necessarily like, with the public, there's not much I can do on that side of things, right? right. The officer can. Um, the other part of it too is like, that when, I, when you do have police contact, I call those officers and do a follow up and investigation basically. Uh, and a lot of those times, like, there's no proof that that's happening. It's hard to prove. It's like right. a ghost. It's like, so, and I think that's what people know. They know that they can commit a crime and keep walking. And that's what you see on the news. You, you see people committing crimes. And walking because there's no way to catch these people. Do you also think that with you that there's part of you that's in denial? Because denial for what? To like address these certain things that are plaguing you. The denial of what? Whatever you got going on, like in your, in like that these people are yelling these things. Do you think that it's coming from the voices? No, it, no, the, no, the technology, they do it too. So walking down the street is a constant conversation with somebody. So I'm constantly in conversation with someone. So technology and, in your, yeah, and in then on mind. top of that, not in my mind. Things. Yeah, it's like a little tiny speaker, like a tiny little speaker, wherever it is, huh? of somebody, like a, you're on your phone, as small as the one on your phone that you can hear people talk to you out of, in my ear, of somebody constantly, anybody, 
anybody I know, anybody I've met, anybody I haven't met, uh, speaking to me like they're talking on the cell phone. And, and then you have people who, who walk, physically walk past me and make comments like, you're still gay, be gay, you're a rapist, or yelling out sex offender. Mm -hmm. So no, I'm not in denial. I don't constantly think I'm gay. I don't imagine that I'm gay. I don't not want to be gay. I, I am not gay. And I think the thing is, someone convinced or someone found a way they believe would convince someone else to be gay. And they do that by harass, harassing them everywhere they go. Or if you so happen to see this person, tell him to be gay. But they're not the same people. No, it's a community of people. So it's like anybody who happens to be gay, if you see him, tell him to be gay. And that's what I'm dealing with. And that's what I reported to you. And that's what you guys have told me was a mental health that's crisis. Right. So like in, in my experience, with like when you're stating that there's a pattern of behavior that it's coming from this tech piece in your mind, and then coming from a community, and it's bothering you, it's bothering your feelings about the subject, right? And I, I didn't say that. I'm just telling. Yeah, but it doesn't have like... It's ir uh, uh, kind of not really. Uh, I think it's wrong. Okay. So I, I don't. I, I, I'm, I'm more resolved. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's more like a thought. So how can I tell? Who can I tell? And continue to tell on these people because I, I understand there's nothing I can do about it. Well, and that's why I really think so. My capabilities like I'm not a counselor, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a doctor. Yep. Know? Yep. Um, so. All I have in my role, right, is to either refer on the areas that I think maybe would be able to help you, mm -hmm. right? Um, try to work through some of yeah. that stuff because I just don't have the like training right. to do that. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. And I and I, I my job is just to tell. And and someone was just telling me that uh, I forgot who uh, he just flashed an image in my eyes. I don't know who it was, but he just said. If he's not a doctor, then why did he tell you it was a mental health crisis if he can't diagnose, uh, so I be... Didn't, I didn't say that you had a mental health crisis, like a crisis or condition. I didn't say that last time. I just asked if you were open to seeing, like, something, like a professional in that sense, to look at you and help you see. Okay. So, I, I did not... I, yeah, no, no, I, I, I got plenty, um, and I think that's what I came for, uh, to read... I think I should have been doing it for years. I think I should have been, every time I've told you guys this, and every time you referred me to a mental health professional, or that came out of anyone's mouth, I sh we should have recorded it. And I do, I, I do think you should see a mental health like, professional. What is, what is your professional, how did you form that professional opinion? Based on your community interactions with the public and with the police officers. I didn't say that. They said be gay. They said have sex with have sex with dudes. Well, it will grow your something. genitals, or you're supposed to be gay. Uh, will grow your genitals if you have sex with men, and will let you have sex with women. And then the issues I've been having is almost gay culture related because historically, gay men have prevented straight guys from having sex with dudes because they want to have sex with that person. And that's not that's not made up. That's that is like a, a history historical problem in the community. So anywhere through time, I'm not super aware of. This. Yeah, and that's okay. Anywhere through time, you you there's been stories that gay men will harass women that of who marry guys that they want to have sex with, and it's dangerous for women because girls are weaker than guys, and that's what I've been dealing with. And my community relationships are great. They are great. I, I don't cause problems. I'm still not, I haven't hurt anybody. I haven't attacked anybody. I haven't done anything to anybody. So it's I'm not, not a, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm, I want to, I'm saying I haven't. So the, the social, being social and being inside the community, I don't have a problem being social or a part of the community. It's that the gay community wants me to be a part of, of their community. And that is where you have the issues. And that's where you have police showing up. And that's where you have these conflicts of, of whose rights should, were violated, who's having the problem. And that's why you, you just said what you said. It wasn't about me. Uh, it's not about me having a problem being in the community. 
It's about certain people forcing or trying to force me to be a part of their community. And there is where the issue lies. I don't want to be gay. I don't want to be in the gay community. And there are things that gay dudes do to try to get guys to have sex with them. And when they do those things, or women or females, they do the same thing. Um, when they do those things, I tell or I, I call you or I call the police or the police are called by somebody. And then they have to come and decide uh, who's right for violating. Well, and the other, the other reason that I do think, too, that it would be helpful for you to seek that type of professional help um, is because we can never put a name or face or like to any of these people. You said they've come from within you through that speaker, so to speak, right? So I don't know, like for me, I don't know how I can help you with that because I don't want you to be plagued by these things in the community. Like I don't think it's right if people are harassing you on a topic that you don't want to be a part of, right? Right. So I agree I agree with your like basis that you don't want to be bothered by these people. Right? Yeah. And, like I totally get what you're saying. Yep. Uh, but the, where I get more concerned is that it keeps happening, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why um, I think that kind of help might be able to just help you process some of that stuff with where it's, even if it's just to like talk through, like, I don't like these people, I don't like I them. use Twitter. Okay. So I tweet a lot of the things that happen to me. Mm -hmm. I use Twitter. I use YouTube. Because uh, the social, the medical, the professional help, uh, it's like they're predetermined. Like these people are already prepared to redo, miss the read, like to change the, the course of action, from addressing the problem to helping uh, the problem. Like re, re perpetuating the cycle. So you try to you, you get problems in the community. You go get help, and that person redirects you to the problem. Wait, sends you back the way you came. And that's, and that's what I'm trying to avoid. So instead of doing that, I just go to Twitter, I tell what happened, and I let the public decide. I, I, I go to YouTube, and I let the public decide. And then hopefully somebody smart and realizes what I'm saying is reasonable and wants to learn more, and they ask me questions. And that's what I'm after. So what is the public, so you care a lot about the public opinion? Yes. In most cases? Okay. Uh, so what, uh, what can we do? I don't know. Okay. I'm just telling. So I just, uh, if it happens to me out there, I think it's important for you to know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to continue to tell like I've been doing for yeah. like the last five years. Well, I'll continue to keep the notes and monitor, you know, right. same as, same as we have been. So okay. every time I take it down, I write, I write notes in, in our files. So okay. uh, it's always there, so it's a documented what has happened. Okay. So then, then, All right. Alright, anything else today? Nope. Alright, let's set our next appointment, okay? In a month now. I don't have anything else for you today. Let's go in September. Can you do a Tuesday, September 20th? Yep. Alright, let's do September 20th. Then what time will work best for you? Um, anytime. You want to do 2.30? Again? Yep. Alright, let's do 2.30, September 20th, alright? Yep. Alright, any other concerns, questions for me? No. Alright, take care, John. We'll see you in a month. Yep.